We are welcome to the Marriage Conference Show, a show where we'll talk in depth about the upcoming Marriage Conference at the International Conference Center on the 6th of April 2019. I'll be your host, Abdullah Abdullah, and today we'll have special guests, the Amir of One Ummah organization, Mala Al Bakr Sadiq, and the talk show hosts of Did You Know? Sheikh Shurai. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, now let, let us begin. The marriage conference. What is the marriage conference? Um, so, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli wa sahbihi wa sallam. Um, so, the marriage conference uh, in basically connotes what already the name gives it off uh, as an event or a conference that's basically targeting marital issues. Um, it's an event that's been held internationally in different parts of the world. Um, started out in, Mal in Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, uh, and then spread to uh, South Africa, uh, United Kingdom. And now, inshallah, for the very first time, it will be coming to the western part of Africa, Nigeria, for the very first time, inshallah. Um, and the idea is to look at how to uh, address you know, the plethora of marital issues that we have, especially in our Muslim communities. Um, from how to meet the right spouse to knowing who the right spouse is to how to live uh, a blissful or a very fulfilled married life um, and then having how to deal you know with children and also issues um, of divorce as well even if it ever gets to that level um, and just every single thing regarding the marriage and so the marriage conference uh, looks at bringing uh, season experts uh, marital experts counselors uh, scholars who have for a very long time delivered very profound lectures that have helped uh, shape and transform the, um, the audience, those who attend it, seeking to better their lives, better their marriages. It helps them really to um, attain such a blissful way and to even connect with the life of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who Allah had blessed him with having the most number of wives permitted for him specifically as an example and as a role model for us as Muslims to know how to treat our wives. And so in following in those footsteps, you know, we now see a practical way of applying such in our lives today. So from the different lecture topics that are very, very passionate, uh, we've seen some of the topics like uh, how to deal solid as a rock, for example, or till depth do us part. Um, very nice mm -hmm. catchy topics that helps us, you know, connect our past and our heritage with our present times and hopefully our future as well. Oh, you were talking about the marriage conference being for everyone, including divorcees, people to be. What about the single people? Well, um, like I had started um, talking about how it's an event that covers everything regarding marriage and in terms of the participants, uh, people that attend, you would have, yes, naturally, you would have couples come. Um, you would have those who probably were couples and then divorced. Uh, they were married, sorry, and divorced at some point. Those who have lost spouses as well and still seeking to rekindle some level of companionship with someone else that has the same things of the same wavelength, wavelength. And then those who are single who have never been married. In fact, this I would say is core or the core of this uh, program is looking at really addressing those who are single and have never been married before, yes, sure. um, male and female. Um, and alhamdulillah, um, part of the program itself and what's happened internationally um, is that it's helped really bring singles together, male, female, uh, to meet in a halal environment, to engage one another and w potentially also be able to get married in a, in a halal environment, so. which is also very important. Um, because one thing is, you know, we live in a society today where there is a lot of free mixing that goes on. Um, in our environments, whether we uh, tend to recognize it or not. It could be in our institutions, it could be in our workplaces. And sometimes because we don't understand the adab, the ethics of engaging with others, we end up doing things that are completely out of the sharia. So the marriage conference helps to just you know, provide an environment for singles as well, um, who can meet in a halal way. Um, and with walis present can also get to uh, show the interest of wanting to marry a certain person, either based on the characters or based on the profiling. Um, or yes, as well, for the sake of Allah. Um, but also because they want to fulfill 
half of their deen. And as you know, this uh, marriage itself is a sunnah of Rasulullah uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he says, al-nikahu sunnati, that marriage is my sunnah. Um, so if we help people to facilitate doing or establishing a sunnah of the Rasul sallallahu mm -hmm. alayhi wa sallam, mm -hmm. then this in itself is ibadah. And this in itself is also rewarding for all those that are involved uh, directly or indirectly. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. And uh, those before we go further, Abdullah, you need to register. You're single, MashaAllah. <laughs> so, all Shaykh, need to register. Inshallah, Inshallah. <laughs> so, Shaykh, uh, when it comes to the marriage conference, this is the first time in Nigeria, right? Uh, whenever I had some, when I, when I saw the poster first about marriage conference, I was like, marriage conference for a day, morning to night talking about marriage? And I was like, wow. So, to what extent do you think that our society needs to be concerned about marriage? Well, we, we need to be, in fact, it should be a front burner. Hmm. It should be an issue on the front burner. Why? Because you see from the marriage, um, from the home basically, or the, first you start with the marriage and then you build the home and from the home you build the community and sure. then you build your society in general. Sure. If you don't have a marriage that is built on the right foundation, hmm. the fear of Allah, taqwa, and also um, built on honesty and integrity and trustworthiness, what happens is that you begin to produce offspring mm. that exhibit such things not just to themselves personally but even to the society in general absolutely and uh, then you begin to have the kind of challenges that we have today in our society and that's one of the reasons why with the marriage conference we tackle these issues from the foundation mm. first of all who do you want to get married to how do you want your marriage to be how do you want your spouse to be how do you want to live with your spouse what happens when you have conflict in your marriage how do you resolve conflict in the marriage because conflicts are bound to happen um you know the man might understand things differently woman understands differently so how do you you know address such issues of conflict when they arise when they are different uh, you have different uh, understanding of the, basically from the spouses um but you still want to achieve the same goal which mm. is pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I, I believe that this is a very important event mm. uh, and then the scholars who are coming people who are seasoned people who have done this globally internationally it's a great opportunity for us to learn to take some of that knowledge they have and try to see how to implement it because what they're doing is not they're not really coming to show you something new or tell you something new mm -hmm. in terms of the quran and sunnah or understanding the quran and sunnah but they're coming to tell you how to practicalize what you already know mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that we have sort of a disconnect in our society today. a lot of people feel like um, you know how can i how can i be a practicing brother or sister how can i have my beards and my nispo sack and I'm holding my wife and we're walking around and showing, you know, that love and compassion. Or how do I even exhibit such love and compassion to my spouse? And it's <laughs> vice versa for the woman. You know, I've seen people who, when they, when they see their, their husbands are maybe sort of, um, they show this affection towards their spouses. And I don't mean public display of affection. I don't mm. mean the type that you see in the West. I, I mean even simple things like walking like in the house in the house for example you know playing with your spouse being able to talk to her in a gentle manner holding her hands you know calling her habiba ki qalbi you know Mashallah. words that you know would make her smile just at the thought of you look at rasulullah sallallahu <laughs> alaihi wasallam how he was with his spouses with aisha where she, he would for example part of the sunnah he would treat Aisha in such a manner that she would feel so loved and so honored. Yes, and, you know, there was a particular narration of where Aisha radiallahu anha had bitten a piece of meat from one particular spot. Mm. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so, so. turned the meat to that same spot and bit it from the same place where she placed her mouth. Yeah, Rob. You know, and it was showing that romance and that love, subhanallah. And you look at the sahabas, Ali bin Abi Talib, for example, and his wife Fatima. They were like the lovebirds of Medina. Mm. It was said when they would, he would make poems about, uh, about Fatima, his wife, which signified how he honored her and raised her to the highest of levels. Mashallah. We forget some of these things today, or we don't even know some of these things. And for that reason, this conference, subhanAllah, I pray for everyone that attends, will be a door to seeing how to be romantic and to be, you know, how to love your spouse mm. in line and in accordance with Quran and Sunnah. This is very beautiful, mashallah. Um, because, uh, you know, a lot of people think if you're married, you got to be harsh to your wife. Yani, yeah. You come in and you say, Mamang Fatima. I should be like Baba Fatima. Yes, you should be like Malak al Maut. <laughs> yes, Allah. <laughs> Malak al Maut. Yeah. May Allah make it easy I for mean, us. Yeah, May Allah exactly make it easy like for us. Exactly. I mean, Alhamdulillah. Right. Right. So, now as a single person myself, if I go to the marriage conference, 
Am I going to come out with a spouse? By Allah, so we need to do this for you to come out with a spouse, you will come out with a spouse. And, um, the, the idea is not, you know, generally to think, oh, I'm single, I go in there, I must be married when I'm coming out. <laughs> no. But the idea is to plant the seed of what you should look at or look out for in a potential spouse. How you should be in terms of going in for marriage or going into marriage. What are the things you should look at achieving even when you get married? What should be the things that should remain a core for you? That years after, when the love is no longer there between, or so strong, it's not that it's no longer there, but it's not as strong as it was in the early stages when you met your potential spouse or your spouse. So how do you still sustain that love, mercy, and compassion mm. even after years of being married? This is practically what you know one would get to have um, from the marriage conference. And if you are sincere, and if you are serious, um, and if you know your uh, your your intention is sahih, is not da'if. <laughs> uh, the intention is sahih and not da'if, then it will be a means of you finding a spouse bidni Allah Ta'ala when you attend the marriage conference. MashaAllah Shaykh. And then you know just to leverage on what he said on you know him be a, being a youth mm -hmm. and not married at the same time. We have this problem within the our society today where a lot of young people when they get married to the woman we saw and mashallah she's good. She fears Allah, Jalla Malik, you know, she's, she has every qualities, right? Yeah. But the problem is this, how do we now blend between our parents disagreeing and us also loving the girl? How do we, will the conference address the issue on how to balance such? Inshallah, the conference hopes to address that as well, Inshallah. Mm. It's part of the uh, issues that we would hopefully be bringing up and treating as well. And we hope parents would also get to attend so that they can hear some of these things. Uh, and also support their children, especially those who want to get married, to protect their chastity. Because mm. remember, Allah tells us, "Qad yeah. right? Successful are the believers. Amongst those whom Allah listed as being successful, um, those whom ala furujihim hafidun, those who protect their chastity, they protect their their private parts. Illa ala azwajihim aw ma malakat aymanhum, fa'innahum ghayru malumin. You know, except for when they meet with their spouses, those that are likely their spouses, or those whom the right hands possess. possess. Uh, this particular verse, um, you know, it's really targeting even the spouses, especially in our time of today, where you're looking primarily at the spouses. As uh, Malakat Yameen, um, where we are not at war, where we are not doing battle, where we are not going to conquer a certain place, almost a lot of scholars have agreed that Malakat Yameen, this particular group of persons do not exist in our time of today. Mm -hmm. So what would apply more is the ajwaj, the wives, the spouses, for you to have sexual relations with them to be rewarded by Allah. Because uh, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stated in a hadith, وَفِي بُدَنَ عَهَدِكُمْ صَدَقَةً mm -hmm. And in your sexual relations with your wives, there is charity, there is a reward for you. This is sadaqah. Mm -hmm. You get rewarded when you have such relations with your spouses. And this is one of the benefits of nikah, of marriage, that um, marriage Now, going away from the singles, alhamdulillah, as, a, as if a married man comes in and has a problem with his spouse, or a woman that has, has a problem with her spouse, can she convince or come with her husband or come with his spouse to the conference to iron out these problems? Yes, well, it's, it's hope that we have that. Now, the marriage conference, um, we're going to have certain segments basically uh th there's the marriage there's the main talk the marriage main talk which is um basically going to held in a bigger hall uh, that would take as many number of people as possible and then we have specific programs targeting maybe couples for example there's going to be a workshop mm -hmm. now the workshop the idea of the workshop is to tackle more intimate issues about marriage so you're going to have discussions regarding intimacy for example regarding passion regarding polygamy it's a more, you know, it's a close knit, uh, really, for married couples. So for any spou uh, for spouses who want to attend that workshop, it's one of the best ways of getting closer to your spouse and even getting closer to Allah through um, engaging some of these scholars that would be present in Shah. Mm -hmm. So I do, uh, I do encourage as many couples as possible to attend to come with their spouses, uh, whether they have problems or not. It's because mm -hmm. a lot of times we deem or we focus more on where there are problems. problems even where there are no problems come there so that you even learn how to prevent yourself from having problems mm. or when you have such problems how do you tackle and deal with it
Now, just before uh, my brother ends the show, um, the price for coming for the uh, conference, you know, a lot of people, when it comes to Islamic occasions or Islamic lectures, they complain that, ah, it's so expensive, we can't make it and like so. What's your take on this? Well, my take, and this is something we have dealt with for many years. True. Um, you see, I don't see it as a price you are paying for any, because you can never really pay for Islamic knowledge. Mm -hmm. What we see and what we encourage everyone to do or to understand is, this is your form of sadaqa to uplift and promote an event. When you give out this money, don't give it out thinking, I am buying a ticket alone. Give it out thinking, I am also investing in an event that could change the lives of others. So this Mashallah. is for me a contribution. It mm. is sadaqa, it is charity. Now, the fact we put a price to it, also for us as organizers, it helps us to put these events together, to handle logistics, to look at promoting the event, and so many other things that go with you know, organizing an event of this magnitude. True. And if we want to sustain it, without going cap in hand, begging anyone, without seeking anybody coming to donate you know, certain amounts, we would always want to make sure that, look, for the benefit of the public or the participants that come, paying a fee would help in making sure that you attend and you know the, the program is successful and it continues that's and that's one of the reasons why we peg fees for our events and for this marriage conference coincidentally because just um now the prices inshallah will be slashed uh, the discount is going to be given and that was agreed to uh, alhamdulillah that now the main talk is going to be 3,000 Naira mm. for the tickets, inshallah. So inshallah. anyone that's out there, you want to buy your tickets, go out and purchase your tickets from today at the rate of 3,000 Naira for the main talk. And for the workshop, that's going to be 10,000, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Um, just to make more people attend, attend. Uh, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. So this, uh, this, I pray, would be a source of goodness for all of us. And may Allah reward us and accept it from all of us. I mean, yeah, khairan. Our two sheikhs. Well, you've heard it today. Your tickets can be bought at the One Umma website, www.oneummang.org, and also at various sites like the Anur Masjid and Mid Collections. May Allah make it easy for us. Final words, yeah, Sheikh, before we leave? Well, final words, um, just go out there, inshallah, get your tickets as quickly as possible. The event is a few days from now, and I pray you don't miss out on this because you don't want anyone telling you about the marriage conference. It would be truly truly impactful and i accept may allah make it easy for you and may he accept it from you and accept from all of us our sacrifices yeah. as well remember it's not only for your marriage it's also sadaqa <laughs> thank you very much for tuning in and we shall see you again very soon